Sophie Pennis. I'm the founder of Urban Farms LA, and I'm here with Theodore Payne today at my client's garden in West Adams. This is on the Native Plant Tour this year, 2023. This garden is called Jack's Garden, and we're really excited because we were able to document the process of a lawn removal into a baby native garden for you to show you what that might look like. These clients approached me about six months ago because they have this beautiful house and a really large corner lot with a ton of grass and parkway space that they wanted to convert to a native ecosystem, but had no idea where to start, did not know how to format the design, didn't know how to apply for the turf rebate through the city, and just needed some hand-holding and some guidance because it's really scary to have so much space and so much lawn and you know that lawn is not a sustainable option for our future but you also don't know how to move forward. I helped take this space from grass and non-native birds of paradise and non-native acanthus bushes and we were able to turn it together into a native ecosystem with a day of plant removal, a day of sheet mulching, and then a day of planting. We did demo here, removing all the plants that we didn't want to keep. And today what we're doing is removing the Bermuda grass and then we're going to start the sheet mulching process. So normally the sheet mulching process would remove any turf grass, but here they had specifically Bermuda grass, which was really hard to remove. As you can see, these are the roots of Bermuda grass. They're really intense. So this is a creeping grass. It's almost like a ground cover. And I have seen this grass growing under rocks and boulders and concrete. So today, before we do our sheet mulching process, we're actually removing it all by hand so it doesn't come back as soon as we start watering the mulch. After we remove all of the weeds and Bermuda grass, so the first thing that we do is lay down a thick layer of either cardboard or paper followed by mulch, watering the entire time. When you lay down that cardboard or paper, the great thing is, is that it blocks the sunlight from reaching the soil, which means any turf grasses or weeds or most things that you have won't be able to grow back. The other thing that it does is encourage microorganisms from beneath the soil, like deeper in the soil layer, to come up and make that topsoil really nice and buttery and fertile. And those microorganisms, and especially worms and centipedes, love eating cardboard and paper. And so you have this double thing happening where the sunlight is being blocked from the top, the microorganisms are coming in from the bottom, and it's like the perfect mixture for planting your natives. So we just received our delivery of mulch. I tend to go with the super fine mulch when I do the sheet mulching. I find it's easier to work with and it actually breaks down at a nicer rate. And the way that we calculate the amount of mulch is we take the total square footage of the area that needs mulching and then we multiply it by either two or three inches. So two or three inches is a nice amount of mulch to have as sort of like a stack on top of your soil. And then it takes a while to break down so you don't actually have to replace it for another few years. So the mulch is measured in cubic yards. My feeling is always get more rather than less because you can always use more mulch in my opinion. And if you have less, you have to do another delivery. One of the most important parts of the sheet mulching process is that everything stays wet to begin breaking down the cardboard and the mulch. Something I tell my clients a lot is that this is the most water they're ever gonna use for the start of their native garden. So we've been watering this consistently since we started mulching and what we're gonna do is check to see if the water made it all the way through. So we just pull the mulch away. A lot of times you can tell it's wet just because it's sticking to your hand. And this is all wet and then the paper down here is wet which means you're doing a good job and even though it is wet, it is about to get hot out, the sun is coming out. I'm gonna keep watering this till the end of the day. You need to water as much as possible on sheet mulching day to start the breaking down process. Thorough watering is super important, not only the day that you're sheet mulching, but for the next month or two months while everything is breaking down, because you have a thick layer of cardboard or paper, and then you have a thick layer of mulch. And sometimes you think you're doing good watering, but what's actually happening is the water isn't getting all the way down to the soil. So it's important to do constant watering, like maybe I would suggest once a week for 20 or 30 minutes. Sheet mulching can take different amounts of time depending on what material you use. So cardboard tends to be slower at dissolving as opposed to paper or newspaper or brown bags. So I would say about a month to two months is a good amount of time between when you start sheet mulching and when you go to plant. 
After about a month or two of consistent watering, you can dig into that mulch and find that the paper or cardboard has broken down and is gone completely, and then you can start planting. So what I would do is pull the mulch aside, create the space that you want for your plants, dig in, water the hole. Once it drains, you can plant and then bring that mulch back to the base of the plant, but not too close so you don't get any fungal problems. These clients opted out of using any irrigation system aside from hand watering. So our plan is to have them hand water during the rainy season infrequently and then for the first summer every six to eight weeks until the plants are established. This garden is dynamic. It's going to evolve over time. All of these plants are one gallon, except the beautiful oak that you see behind me. And what's great about the one gallon plants is that it really allows the roots of the plants to grow naturally as they would into the soil, as opposed to being in a large container for a long period of time before planting. And it's really exciting to know that these clients are willing to see this garden through the course of its life. And it's really beautiful to not have an instant garden, but to have a garden that grows with you over time. When you walk through this garden on the tour, you need to remember that not even seven months ago, this entire space was a lawn. So the transformation that takes place in that short amount of time with just a little bit of care, a little bit of mulch, and a little bit of one gallon plants is pretty exquisite. It is the most beautiful solution. It's a solution that works for our future. And that solution is using native plants to restore California's native habitat, to reduce water usage, to create animal habitat and to create beautiful places for people to live and to be in their gardens.